In this video, I'm going to be doing a work problem that involves pumping water out of a tank. So let's get started. A water tank is 20 meters long with a cross section shaped like an isosceles triangle. The top of the tank is eight meters across and has a height of 16 meters. The tank is full of water. If the tank has a spout four meters high on the top, find the amount of work required to pump all the water out of the tank through the spout. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed and use G, acceleration due to gravity, as 9.8 meters uh, per second squared. So let's start by drawing a diagram of this situation. So we have an isosceles triangle and the top of the tank is eight meters along the top and it is 16 meters high and it is eight meters long. So the, the width that would be going back that way is 20 to the, to the back of that. And I'm just gonna draw that little bit because I, I need that space. Alrighty, so what is it that we need to figure out here? Well, we know that work is the integral from A to B of a force function times dx. And so in class, I derive the, the, the variation of this formula <clears throat> that we can use for pumping problems. And so the variation on that formula is that work is going to be equal <clears throat> to the integral from A to B of the density, which is rho, times the acceleration due to gravity, which is g, times the volume of, a, of the water that is being uh, pumped out, times the distance that that water has to be pumped. So that's what my integral is going to consist of. Well, rho, the density, is a constant. So rho, as we were told up here, the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So that's 1,000. And acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. So we have that times the integral from A to B, and that will just leave us with volume of the water times the distance that the water has to be pumped out dx. So let's determine the volume first of all. And this is going to use similar triangles. So let's take a look at our triangle. Let's split it right down the middle and create some similar triangles here. So the big triangle, this distance from here to here would be four because the entire base is eight. So this is half the base. This distance I'm going to call R. I'm going to measure X as the depth down from the top of the tank. So that means that X equals zero is at the top and X equals 16 is at the bottom, which would make this distance here X. So as we go down, as the water goes down and down and down as it's being pumped out, X is going from zero to one to two to three, all the way down to X equals 16. All right, so that means that this distance here is going to be 16 minus X. And so our similar triangles will look like this. We're going to have um, four is to 16 as R is to 16 minus X. Well, we can cross multiply. And so we have 16 R is equal to four times 16 minus X. And then dividing uh, by 16, we can solve that for R. R is going to be dividing by 16. We're going to end up with um, four, well, 16 minus X divided by four, which is going to be four minus one fourth X. All right, now, that's the radius. Now, what we really want is we want the base. The base is this entire 
distance here. This entire distance right here is the base of what we're looking at here. The uh, volume is going to be the cross-sectional area times the length. Well, the cross-sectional area is a uh, triangle. So that's going to be one half base times the height times the length. Well, the length is 10. So we have one half the base times the height times, oh, I'm sorry, is 20. Is 20. That is 20. That's the length back here. So one half times 20 is 10. So my volume simply becomes 10 times the base times the height. So the base is equal to two times the radius. So the base is two times four minus one fourth X. So the base is eight minus one half X. So we have the volume is equal to 10 times eight minus one half X times the height. The height is the distance that the water is being uh, pumped um, out of here. And so the height is um, the distance of 16 minus X. 16 minus X is our height. All right, so again, this, the water that is at this level right here, okay, it has a base, we calculated its base, and this distance right here is its height, and the height is 16 minus x. So that's what we want to plug in to our volume. <clears throat> well, that all simplifies a little bit, but what I want to do is I, I need to find the distance. Now, we need to go back here, we found the volume, we need to find the distance, the distance that water is being pumped. So water is being pumped from all the way down here at the bottom, all the way up to the top. So this distance, this is x equals zero, this is x equals 16. So the water at the bottom is being pumped up a distance of 16 plus the distance of the spout. Let's not forget the spout. Remember that there is a spout up here. I didn't draw it, but the spout is four. So from the top of the tank, we got a spout and it's going out the spout. So the distance is going to be the distance uh, X. Remember, so the distance X is the distance that we're measuring vertically here plus four. So distance is X plus four. So now our work is going to be equal to our um, 9.8 times 1,000. That's the density times the integral, I mean times uh, the uh, acceleration due to gravity, times um, the integral from A to B. Now A to B are the bounds on X. Well, the bounds on X is from X equals zero to X equals 16. So x equals 0 to x equals 16. And then we want our volume, which is 10 times 8 minus 1 half x times 16 minus x. And then the distance, which is x plus 4 dx. And so now this is the basic integral. So my concern here was just to get this integration problem set up, right? I think once you've got it to this point, you guys can simplify this. I'll simplify it a little bit. 9.8 times 1,000 is gonna be 9,800 times this 10 is going to be 98,000 times the integral from zero to 16. Multiplying these two together, we're going to get, uh, let's see, eight times eight is 64, so 128. And then um, minus eight and a minus eight is a minus 16x plus one half x squared. 
And then that is being multiplied by x plus 4 dx. And so work is the integral of 98,000 times the integral from 0 to 16. 128 times x would be 128x. Negative 16x times x is a negative 16x squared. 1 half x squared times x is 1 half x cubed. Then, then 4 times 128, what would be, that's 256 times 2. That's a 12, 10, 11, so 512. Yep, 512. So 4 times 128 is plus 512. 4 times a negative 16 is a negative 64x. And 4 times 1 half x squared would be 2x squared dx. Um, adding together any similar terms that we have here and putting it in descending order, work then is going to be equal to 98,000 times the integral from 0 to 16. So let's start with that. 1 half x cubed uh, plus 2x squared minus 16x squared would be minus 14x squared. 128 minus 64 would be 64x, uh, and then 512 dx. So there's my simplified radical. So I just kind of did this problem on the fly, so you guys can check my work, see if I made any mistakes. Uh, but I don't think I did, but then whoever thinks they did. That would be your integral. I am not going to go ahead and integrate it. You would just use the uh, power rule for integrating to find the antiderivative, evaluating it from 16 to 0, and that will give you uh, your final answer for the amount of work in joules. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video.